Hello everyone and welcome to a review for A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. This edition that I have is, uh, as you can tell, it's the paperback edition. The actual story is, before the author's note, 285 pages. It does have, this edition has an excerpt from the novella that comes after this, which is one point, book number like 1.5, so it's the novella after this one. Um, I do believe I have an ebook copy of that. I'm going to have to double check, but I wonder if I can get a paperback. I don't know. Anyway, there's an excerpt from Damaged Goods, which is the next one in the series, and then it's officially book number two after that. But this is book number one in the Ravenswood series, written by Talia Hibbert. This is an adult romance, and it is contemporary. This takes place in England. And so this is book number one. There's a total of three books, not counting the novella between books one and two. This was published in 2018. There is an audiobook available for this. Uh, only one narrator for narrating from different points of view, Ruth and Evan. Yes. So, uh, and that is Rupert Channing. And the audiobook is seven hours and 54 minutes on standard one time speed. So just shy of the eight hour mark. So this one we're following two POVs. So the first one is Ruth uh, Kaba. She is autistic. She had this boyfriend at one point and at some point after their breakup she was basically termed the town slut. It is in a small town and she likes to draw web comics, uh, so she does that. And web comics is like one of her special interests and passion. She does not cook. She will microwave stuff, but you do find out she does not have an oven, and there is a reason for that, which is actually really interesting. Uh, so yeah, so that is uh, Ruth. The male interest in this, who is not the ex-boyfriend, the current male interest is Evan. He is an ex-military man, but it very lightly touches on that. It's mostly more prevalent in the synopsis. It does touch on it like once, maybe twice, very quickly and briefly in the book, but it's not a big thing. Evan works at the same place as Ruth's ex-boyfriend works at, which is owned by his dad, her ex-boyfriend's dad. So it's like a family-owned business. Evan happens to work there. So one day, Ruth wakes up, she has a period emergency, basically her period started, she has no tampons or pads, has to run to the store, and then when she's trying to hurry and run home, she literally runs smack into him and ends up falling on the pavement and he helps her up. So, and then he takes an interest, and this other guy, Daniel, I think is his name, who was the ex, is like, just avoid her, she's the town pariah, she is slow, and he literally calls her slow, and that irritated me to no end. But there are people like that in the world. Um, so yeah, and then obviously with it being a small town, gossip spreads. And Ruth, it is termed that Ruth is prickly, is Evan's word, and he says he likes prickly. But, I mean, you think about people that are autistic. Not everyone, but a lot of people who are autistic are blunt. They tell it like it is, um, and things like that. And so a lot of people kind of take that as... She's standoffish, she's pushing people away, things like that, which is, from my understanding, very is pretty can be pretty common with people on the autism spectrum. But anyway, so this is told in third person. Now, it turns out that Evan and Ruth are next door neighbors in this like apartment complex type of a thing. And but they didn't know that. Evan decides one day that he wants to get to know his neighbor. The walls are super thin, so sometimes he hears, hears his neighbor knocking things around. Here's the bed creak, you know, and vice versa. Um, he decides he wants to get to know his neighbor, so he makes a shepherd's pie, takes it to the neighbor, turns out it's Ruth, the gal that he ran into him, and <coughs> um, <clears throat> that's when he sees that she does not have an oven, so he decides to cook for her, and they spark make this deal because he sees these stacks of comics and there's a few comments comments that are made they strike a deal where he'll bake a bake her basically dinner that she can just read it reheat in the microwave but he'll do a home cooked meal for her and she will give him like a couple of comics to read and they can kind of talk about that and get to know each other so 
and it's a romance. Romance blooms. Now this is sexually explicit. It is not erotica, so it does not go that far. I would say it's just just above the mild, maybe. <laughs> so, I mean, it's your romance. Love blooms between the two. There's opposition as far as people don't think it's right. Um, people question the relationship. And more rumors fly. Someone gets jealous and it starts to make people question things. Uh, and things like that. And they kind of grow into their own selves, especially with Ruth growing into her own confidence um, and realizing things about herself that she just kind of felt guilty about and tried to suppress. So I really enjoyed this. I have several tabs here. So let me go ahead and tell you what some of these tabs, I will not read them all, but let's go ahead and tell you what some of these tabs are. Uh, let's see. When it came to, to knocked doors, so someone's like knocking on her door. She didn't answer them. She didn't enjoy speaking to people willy-nilly. Anyone who wanted to see her could arrange it well in advance, preferably via text or email. And I'm like, I get that. I hate when I'm not expecting company and company shows up, whether it's a door-to-door -door salesman or something, it's like, I want to expect you. <laughs> that's So I completely agree with that. Uh, but that's that's me. Everyone had opinions. Yes, everyone has their opinions. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, there are some things you don't get over. You just accept them and keep breathing. That's enough. And, and this will be the last one that I read. She wanted to avoid her sister's gaze and pour her focus into something else, some mundane task. She wanted to split up her attention so that processing these words wouldn't seem quite so intense. And I get that too, because sometimes it's like you have these intense emotions and to kind of have to process them in your mind, it helps to focus some of your attention on something else so, it does, so that the words and the feelings don't seem quite so overwhelming. So totally get that, totally related to Ruth loved this book. Now this was actually a reread for me and I enjoyed this upon the reread more than I did upon the first read of this. So yes, I enjoyed it. Now there are, this is spicy, there are open door sex. You have one scene where all they do, Evan does, is basically fondle her. Uh, you have a scene with oral sex. Uh, she uh, does sex, oral sex to him. And then there's two that might be a combination of the three. But it is, they do have sex. And it is open door, so you are seeing it. Now, let's talk about additional trigger warnings. You have, let's see, I have them written down here. Cancer. Ruth being called slow because she's different. You know, she's, she's autistic and people think she's slow just because it might take her a little bit to process something, to understand what the meaning is, or trying to decipher what she thinks they mean. People call her slow. You have loss of a parent, you have talk of divorced parents, and that's aside from the open door sex that some people will find triggering, uh, that's pretty much all the trigger warnings that I was able to come up with on this. As far as representation, you do have racial diversity. Evan is white and Ruth is black, so you do have a bit of racial diversity there. And autism, and this the author is autistic. This was actually the selection for January for the Autism Reads, which is a book club that I host. And we have a book selection each month. The Discord for Autism Reads is always in the description box. So this was the January selection. Next month will be a YA. Now, in case you're still on the fence for this, uh, let's go ahead. And Tali Hibbert does have other works out. Uh, she is most known for her Brown Sisters series. That's the one I hear about people talking about the most. So get a life, Chloe Brown. Take a hint, Danny Brown. And I don't remember the other one. So, but yeah, so that's the one that she's most known for. And her YA one, which was fairly cute. That's the other one that kind of hit big. So, not such a well-known one. I don't hear people talking about this series. I think it, this particular series is definitely underrated. Um, if you like the Brown Sister series, I think you'll like this book. All right, now 
let's talk about the word counts. Please keep in mind, there's always a chance I could have missed a tally for these words counts. I do these tallies so that if you're still on the fence after knowing the content and trigger warnings and kind of what it's about, then maybe these words will kind of help sway you one way or the other. Now, I do suggest being 18 or older for this because of the words that are used. So if you are younger than 18, please click, click off of this video. Or if you have kids younger than 18 in the room, please save the video for later. <laughs> so, all right, let's go ahead and get into this. Some of these words do have multiple meanings. For um, example, there's a word that could be like a child's toy, but at the same time, it could be a body part for the male anatomy. So it can go either way. When I'm using these words in these counts, they are for female or male anatomy, so bodily anatomy, or sometimes these words are not sexual depending on how you use them, and sometimes they are. So when I'm using them, they're for bodily anatomy and they are sexual. So one of those two. We have the word bloody, which is eight times. Now this one I did figure out um, a while ago from several books. This is the equivalent in, because this takes place in England, this is like the F-bomb in America. So, bloody, uh, 13 times. We have shit, 54 times. The term goddamn, one time. The name God, 26 times, not in a religious sense. Bitch, six times. Uh, motherfucker, one time. Prick, three. Arse which is 12 times, but that actually is ass. So arse is the English equivalent, uh, or the England equivalent of ass in America. Uh, the word whore comes up once. Breasts, uh, 14. And the name Lord, three times, not in a religious sense. Bullshit, five times. Hell, 22 times. Hard, six times. Balls, three. Orgasm, four. Blowjob, once. Shaft, once. Girth, twice. Labia, once. Folds, three times. Tits, once. Cunt, three. Damn, nine. Harlot, once. Jezebel, four times. Now I know Jezebel's like a biblical name, um, but this is like how she talks about Ruth, you know, she's a town, labeled the town Jezebel, so basically the town slut. Speaking of which, the word slut comes up four times. Arousal, six. Nipple, 13. Mound, once. Erection, seven. The name Jesus comes up 18 times, not in a religious sense. Clit comes up 13. Uh, and this one, this is the English term, uh, fag, it comes up once, but in England uh, it is another word for cigarettes. So this is not a gay slur, uh, it's, it's a term that's used in England, I've heard several times, like they're going to go smoke a fag, uh, so they're going to go get a cigarette or a pack of fags. Uh, so that's how that is meant in this book. Okay, moving on, we have the word cock coming up 32 times. Um, the name Christ comes up eight, not in a religious sense. Shag one time, bastard once, bollocks once, still not sure what that one means. I need to look into that. Length eight times, whorehouse one time, dick five, pussy eight, tip twice, pre-cum once, head three, rut one, come 16 and wet four. So those are the word counts. Let me know. Have you read anything by Talia Hibbert? Have you only read the Brown Sister series, but looking for more possibly by this author? Uh, I think this was great. The character work is good. In my opinion, Talia Hibbert does a really good job with making the characters very relatable. And I definitely related to Ruth in this in a lot of aspects. So, especially when she talks about how certain things struggle and her thinking with her autism stuff, totally related to her in a lot of aspects. So yes, let me know. Have you read anything by Talia Hibbert? Have you even read A Girl Like Her? Let me know. Talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.